you didn't think there needed to be a cause, but this is the way uh, the plain language of the bylaw says that you do need a cause to disability if it's in the middle of a two-year recognition term. Uh, and, and I'll read it. Um, eligible for recognition of the party when a competition of states on the committee for recognition is demonstrated. One, it's composed of at least 10% of the members. Uh, two, it's adopted the rules for governance. Three, it is elected such officers as are required by the adopted rules. And four, the minimum number of members required to sign a petition to make clear their intent to recognize. Later in the bylaw, it says, uh, uh, if at any time during the two-year recognition period, the local employee committee no longer satisfies all of the criteria necessary for recognition, the state committee may vote to remove the designation, designation of the local appeal committee from the organization. So I would interpret that to mean that those are the only causes for which uh, uh, that designation should be removed within that two-year term. That, that, that's what the bylaws are right now. But again, that, that's the move because we're not doing that two-year term. That's my reason about it. And again, if anyone wants to appeal the rule of the PR, you can certainly do that. But that's my rule uh, of the um, Does this motion require a simple majority vote or a complete Either of these motions. So. Um, it, it, my, my understanding is it requires a simple majority. Certification of a small majority committee. Speaks says you may charge. You said we do not uh, support the statewide candidate uh, Robert Charles for governor. That is not true. He was a guest at our meeting in July. Dr. Mark was with him. Uh, many of us made contributions at that time to his campaign. We endorsed Mr. Charles for governor, and we actively defended him in the uh, local Virginia power plants. Uh, throughout the campaign. In fact, he did better in Tidewater than he did in the state as a whole. So how it could be said that we, in, in Virginia Beach and Chesapeake, yes, he did. Uh, just a just, uh, point of clarification. Uh, I didn't make that charge myself. I said that was the charge. Well, it's charges, the it's only charges uh, that's coming to the surface. Uh, I, I the thing is, we did endorse. We had three members. For reasons of their own. They have a right to do that. One of them, however, was our chairman. And because he was our chairman, his support for Puccinelli began to be interpreted as a lack of support for Mr. Sarvis by the TLP. As soon as that was recognized, I asked Robert to resign. Two days, two days later, he did. Now, Beyond that, what are we supposed to do? The, the, uh, what the, uh, you, you have made, you have an objection with Robert, you may, you may or may not, but the affiliate did the right thing. So how is that a charge against us? Uh, thank you, Don. Um, Mr. Secretary, do you have your motion right? I think so. I think this should satisfy the uh, discussed here. <clears throat> the State Central Committee hereby resolves to forego renewing its affiliation with the organization known as the Tidewater Council. The State Central Committee hereby directs the chairman to issue a cease and desist letter to the group and its current officers is directing them to cease and desist using the name of the carrying of the Party or anything similar in their communications. The State Central Committee hereby requests the LPBA chair issue a call for a reformation meeting of potential affiliates within the previous Tidewater LP area. Is there a second for that motion as stated? Second. Um, is there, uh, so I rule that that motion is in order. Uh, is there an appeal to the rule of the chair? Uh, see it not. Um, that motion is in order. And now we'll discuss that motion. Um, Don, Don has spoken, uh, but we will hear from the other side for a few minutes and keep all the heading of it. Would anyone like to speak in favor uh, of that motion or on the charges, rather? Uh, I guess, would, any, would anyone speak 
like to speak. Um, I'm not sure the phrase against or not for In favor of the motion to not renew. In favor of the motion to not renew. Um, please raise your hand. Uh, Can we open this up to the uh, is, 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 is there objection to open up this gallery? I see not. Um, when we talked about going back and forth, um, we said that the, 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 we were limited to two minutes, which I can find. Um, would you like the, the Secretary to call the people or should I call the people? Secretary. The Secretary. So, proceed. All right. First, uh, could I see a show of hands of anybody who would like to speak on this issue? I'm sorry, Mr. Montreal, do you mean anyone on the committee as well? On either side. Either side. Oh, you mean from the committee or from people in the room? Anyone in this room who has an interest in this matter who would like to discuss it, I will yield my time to those people. I'm going to start with John. As I said in an email that I sent out to the uh, committee, uh, when this uh, began, I, I was making an attempt to stay out of the fray and be a I think that there has been a, a long-standing um, conflict, but it's been basically between the uh, FCC or the LPDA and Robert Dean, um, and by extension, the Steve Bradley, who is the membership chair of the CLC. What uh, Don has said is that uh, it is true. Foster campaign at the meet, the meeting down in Virginia Beach. You were there. Um, I went to the job early from work on election day and went to work at polls for Tarvis. And uh, there were several other Libertarian Party members that did so. Um, so I know that there has been a a long record going back almost 10 years of, of some of this conflict, but it's been specifically with mostly Robert Dean, because Robert Dean has a lot of connections and a lot of friends in the uh, Republican Party. Um, when Robert stepped over the line, he was told that he needed to resign, and he did. Now, the acting chair um, of the TLP has anybody had a problem with him? Other than the latest fight that we've been having. Thank, thank you, John. Uh, that, that, is, that is two minutes. Um, I think I'm going to call on this one thing. Right here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, I have the utmost respect for everyone on the TLP that's here present today. Unfortunately, I can't speak like that for my experience with the TLP. I joined the TLP, I think it was in May, um, because I wanted to get away from this two-party monopoly that is engulfing this country, and I thought that this would be the perfect place to do so. Unfortunately, I never, well, let me not say nothing. I didn't get that feeling yet. What I found was a chairman who was, to me, pushing more the Republican platform than the Libertarian platform. I think I could honestly say I heard more Republican than I did Libertarian. And, you know, I might be, might be off a little bit, but the general feeling that I have, and I'm a, I'm a guy from Brooklyn, I gotta go and feel it. I gotta feel you out. And I did not feel comfortable there. I mean, the only reason I stayed is because this country needs help. And this is about the only way I feel I can help. Now, uh, I got a three-page letter here from Dan Foster, who ran for delegate at the 78th district. I don't know if I have time to read the whole thing. Do I? <laughs> Everybody has it. Everybody has it. So I'll go on to the next one. This one did it for the PD letter, the PD email that she sent. As to all members of the TLP, as a chair and the 
CLP membership chair asking for the for uh, Rob Saunders to step down.